Hello cycling fans all over the world. Welcome to join the Baltic Chain Tour, which took place in the second half of August in 2013 and passed along the roads of four countries, Finland, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. The tradition of the cycling race was revived two years ago and the first Baltic Tour was run in the 1950s. This year, the UCI 2.2 category race lasted for seven days. 21 teams started the race, of which 10 ranked pro teams, 4 amateur teams and 7 national teams. Among the best known teams under starters orders were Itera Katyusha from Russia, Ukrainian Col Cycling, classified for the Team Trial World Championships, Torku Sekerspor from Turkey, and the world's biggest cyclocross team, BKCP Power Plus. The victorious Lithuanian team, which came first last year, was trying to remain unbeaten. However, without the defending champion Gediminas Bagdonas, the number one jersey was worn by Tomas Vaitkus, one of the Lithuanian world-class riders. He is the former time trial world champion in the under 23 category and right now belongs to the world tour team Orika Greenage. First of course maybe it's like uh, to, to help for the boys for the national team to share my experience with them and uh, okay we're going to try to win the stage or also GC. So we're going to try to fight for the best. The tour started on August 19 in a Finnish town, Lahti. The town, which has featured in the world news mainly because of cross-country skiing, welcomed the riders with a somewhat damp and rainy weather, with the highest temperature of only 16 degrees. In other words, the extreme conditions were equal to everyone and the race kicked off. The competitors had to cycle 1,019 kilometers in total at least those who intended to finish in Vilnius. The first stage ran for 168 kilometers. From the very beginning, the riders set a very fast tempo. The route twisted along narrow roads, arching up and sloping down. The landscape was pretty challenging. One curve was followed by another, giving the opportunity to rush ahead as the route allowed the leaders to eke out the advantage. The first good escape was performed by 20 men, amongst them also the Kazakhstan rider Andrei Mizurov, who cycled many years in the top teams of Astana and Deutsche Telekom. In the Baltic Chain Tour, he was wearing the colors of Torku Sekerspor. For me, it's a new race. It's the first time here. In principle, I've been in the Soviet Union. In principle, it's a good race. It's all good. Проведение гонки на, ну, при, нормально. Для меня, конечно, немножко сложности, потому что равнина и ветер. Я все-таки предпочитаю горы. Во сколько хорошая команда здесь в этом году у вас? В принципе, состав сильный здесь. Испанец Делифуэнто, де Юрий Митлушенко, тот, который может финишировать, и Сергей Гречин. В принципе, состав сильный здесь и Это первый состав такие. The first intermediate sprint finish on the 23rd kilometer in Vieruma was won by the leader group rider Martin Laas from the amateur club Sarema Viking. However, the leader's success didn't last and soon they were caught by the rest of the group. The next escape proved successful for a group of eight, representing eight different teams. But although they dominated in the next 25 kilometers, they were only able to produce a gap of not more than 35 seconds. The next big attack occurred a few kilometers before the second intermediate sprint. The group was large, with a Lithuanian national team and Col cycling team in the front with four riders. The winner of the intermediate sprint was Lukas Liss, the member of the German national team, leading the group of 25 riders. They managed to increase the gap with the peloton by 1 minute and 20 seconds. Before the finish, riders had to pass the first mountain finish of the tour on the 137th kilometer. The leader group, with winner Damian Walczak from Polish BDC Markpol team, arrived at the line 40 seconds ahead of the peloton. 
The attack that came after the mountain finish was led by only five riders, since among the leaders there were no riders from the big Lithuanian national or Kols teams, the pursuit began to work frantically to raise the tempo. Five riders were ahead of the pack for 15 kilometers before they were caught up by a group of 13. So eight riders all in all were dominating the remaining 20 kilometers of the race. Paavo Bajanen, the expected leader of the Finnish amateur club TWD Lanken, tried to attack on his own in Lahti, however, with little success. Instead, the stage was won by the German rider Philipp Walsleben from BKCP Power Plus, who made a getaway on the last kilometer. The world champion in 2009 in cyclocross in under 23 category got his third UCI category win on the road. The runner-up, Lucas Liss, lost by two seconds. Third place was occupied by Alo Yakin from the peloton. Thus, the winner of the stage also received the leader's shirt. In the beginning it seems to be an easy stage, but then uh, it was a little bit wind and we could uh, ride away with 30 guys. And then uh, it seemed that we uh, would be in the peloton again, but we could ride away again. <laughs> and then I was trying not to waste so much energy in the last kilometers. And this morning I took a look at the last kilometer here and I knew where to go. And uh, I could uh, take the corners with full risk and then it was enough. I could tell you no more. The first contenders from the peloton finished 15 seconds behind the leader. The remaining riders ended up with a loss of 19 seconds each. A few hours later, judges decided to level the gap. Madis Lepaya, the UCI second commissioner of the race, explained the reasons behind that decision. During the last kilometer, the group had to go around the roundabout to the finish. But uh, the, the road was not, uh, not blocked, not closed totally, so behind uh, the uh, back of the bunch went straight on. So it means that they uh, received um, uh, about 100 meters uh, advantage. And because of that, there were some gaps in the group on the finish line. So the, as it happened on the last kilometer, so the decision of the commissars was that um, um, because of this incident, all first group uh, 14 riders will be credited the same time and there was also gap in the big group so they are credited the same time so this was the best possible solution the race continued on august 20 in estonia in its capital city of Tallinn, and to be precise, in its cradle of power at Tompea Hill. Precisely 22 years previously, Estonia had regained its independence, the fact that the Rigigogu speaker Enna Ergma also mentioned in her speech to the riders before the start. I wish you very good competition. I wish you very good competition in Estonia, in Lithuania, in Latvia. Good luck. The weather, which had taken a turn for the better, was warm and sunny and a lot of people had gathered to give the tour a proper send-off. The riders had to cover 193 km long stage from Tallinn to Viljandi. In the beginning of the stage, there was a pleasant surprise with a Hollywood superhero Spider-Man joining the group of riders. Although it was soon clear that the Baltic tour was not as easy as climbing the walls. First intermediate sprint in Rapla on 51 km was won by a member of the German national team, Maximilian Bayer, cycling in the main group. The bunch continued to control the race and nobody was able to bridge the gap to less than 200 meters. On the 56 km of the race, two Ukrainians started setting the pace. They were Vitaly Popkov, the holder of the silver medal in the World Championships in 2007 in Team Track Pursuit Race and the Ukrainian champion in 2010, both in road race and time trial, and Mikhailo Radionov, the new pro from the Kols team. 
The more experienced and renowned Popkov was cycling in white jersey of the ISD Continental team. The gap with the peloton quickly grew to a couple of minutes and it was expected that the Ukrainians would try to hold the lead for as long as possible. Rumours circled that the riders were forced to make four stops during the race due to the train crossings. It wasn't actually that bad, although the peloton did have to make one break shortly after Turi Intermediate sprint on 118 kilometers as the group had to stop in front of the train barrier. As a result, the pack lost almost two minutes, so the leaders gained the advantage of five minutes and five seconds. However, the main group kept going with a slight side wind and still two more hours to cover. On the 132nd kilometer of the stage, when the riders had reached the village of Bretla, it started pouring with rain. The gap between the leaders and the peloton was narrowed and at the mountain sprint finish in Sarabedi, 175 kilometers, the gap had faded to mere 50 seconds. Since there were still around 20 kilometers to go before the finish in Villandi, it was clear that sooner or later the hard-working duo would be caught up with. Still, with all the efforts Popkov put in, he managed to clinch one intermediate and one mountain finish. Как надежда была, ну, маленькая, гонка быстрая, поэтому терпели как могли. Какой план был? Хотели, чтобы побольше гонщиков были с вами впереди? Ну, если бы хотя бы еще человека три было, то, может быть, и доехали бы. Просто ветер встречный и погодные условия. Дождь опасно, скользко. On the last kilometers in Villandi town, the route offered the dramatic Gurgama climb of about 200 meters with average gradient of 17%, followed by the technical and slippery descent and narrow uphill track to the finish. Here, the BKCP Power Plus team was able to show off in pure cyclocross style. A double victory to the Belgian team was brought by a German, Marcel Meisen, and a Dutch rider, David van der Poel. So, the Wheel of Fortune turned twice in the first two stages of the Tour in favour of the same team. Yes, uh, we have very strong guys. We had the yellow jersey and uh, we tried to defend it and uh, go for the sprint for me. And the, the finish was very difficult. It's good for me, but very much corners and uh, bad roads. But for me, it was very good and the team helped me. Everyone did a great job and uh, yes, so it's great for us. Three more riders clocked the same time with the winner. Swedish national team members Christian Bertilsson and Markus Faglum Karlsson and the Finnish rider Paavo Pajanen. It was the youngest of them, 19-year-old Faglum Karlsson, who took the leader jersey at the end of this day. Villandi seems to be a fortunate place to Swedes, as a year ago Alexander Gingsjö pulled on the leader shirt here as well. Is it a little bit surprise for you that you, you are a leader right now? Yes, a little surprise for me, but um, I have a great support from my team, so yesterday I, I feel good and the team helped me, so, and I um, do a great finish. On the last descent of the stage, the second man of the opening stage, Lucas Liss, crashed badly, and as a result, he could barely get into the ambulance next morning for checkup. The German had to give up the race since there was no way for him to go on. The damaged leg simply wouldn't bend. One, one still two kilometers uh, to the finish, I crashed and um, downhill, about 50 kilometers per hour. Um, it was a rainy day and um, my brakes doesn't work and uh, then I'd, I really don't know how, but I crashed in, into the, in, on, on the street and now I'm here. The third day of the race took the riders from Villandi to Atapa. The route still ran along the roads of Estonia and the total length of the stage was set at 171 kilometers. The stage started with a flurry of attacks from the riders as the exit from Villandi offered an attractive uphill track. A bunch of 11 men rapidly broke away and gained a 40 second lead. Amongst them, Rieto Mudelfin was the only team represented by two men. Andres Bozekalns and Peter Bruce 
were set to keep the Latvian pro team up there with the others. When a main group bridged the gap to 15 seconds, three of the escapees, René Mandri from Club Peloton, Ivo Sur from the Estonian national team and Maxim Pokidov from Itera Katyusha, launched a new attack. Their adventurous move gained them a lead of 1 minute and 15 seconds at the 40 km mark. Swedes in the main pack were working hard to keep the yellow shirt and holding the pace. However, already on the 46 km the breakaway stopped holding their ground. Itera Katyusha rider Pokidov was given instructions to give up pedaling by the chief manager of Big Katyusha, Vyacheslav Yakimov, who had been following the race for three days. The Estonian duo also decided it was pointless to try and set the pace and dropped back to peloton. As soon as the three men were sucked back to the main pack, a new attack was launched by five riders. Darius Gerbus from the Lithuanian national team, Sergei Gretchen from Torpu Sekerspor, Reinis Andrianovs from Alpha Baltic, Maximilian Bayer from the German national team and Patrick Tibor from Slovakian national team. In the first intermediate sprint finish in Turba, at 75 km, a German rider Bayer won the intermediate sprint, thus becoming the most active rider of the Tour. The lead of the escapees grew to 3.40. On the 127th kilometer, the mountain sprint finish in Otapa was won by Gretchen. The 33-year-old Ukrainian has been in good shape this year, winning the Tour of Azerbaijan in May and a stage in the Tour of Algeria in March. The advantage in front of the main pack had grown to around one and a half minutes at the moment of getting to Otapa. Five runaways held their ground in the second and also the last intermediate sprint finish at 142 km. Coming from the first Otepa circle, the maximum sprint points were awarded to Gerbus. It was for the first time in this race that Lithuanians had snapped up a victory. At the end of the second Otepa circle, the escapees were caught up, having been in front for around 100 km. In the last 14 km long Otepa circle, Quite a few riders were trying their luck, but all in vain. In the very last kilometer, a Belgian rider, Jens Adams, from BKCP Power Plus team, was in the hunt for the stage victory, but he was chased down on the approach. So the stage win went to a Russian national team member, Andrei Sazanov, an amateur from Moscow Club Dynamo. Marcel Meisen earned the second place of the stage, and Martin Laas finished as the third. Ну, это довольно было спокойно, потому что сначала отпустили отрыв и спокойно его догоняли. А когда его догнали, догнали уже были на кругах и пошла финишная разборка. А задача на этот этап был как у вас? На этот этап у нас была задача сидеть в группе, потому что мы не везли ни майку молодого, ни лидера. У нас, получается, не лидирующие команды, мы не должны работать. Due to bonus seconds awarded in the final and the intermediate sprint finishes, the leader of the tour changed once again. Marcel Meisen pulled on a yellow jersey. The success of the Belgian team BKCP Power Plus during the first days of the race gave us an idea to interview the team owner Christoph Ruthhuft, who told us more about the club and their aims in the Baltic Chain Tour. We are the biggest cyclocross team in the world for the moment, so uh, we are here for preparation. But of course, when you have the best riders in cyclocross, there you have good quality level riders also. So uh, yeah, now we make good results. And uh, like we know, here are also two-time world champion Niels Halbert. Yes, but also Walsleben was world champion. We have. La the World Championship in Coxide last, uh, not this year, but the year before, we had two, three World Champions on four, so... We had, Different categories. Yeah, yeah, we had seven medals from 12, so we are quite good in uh, what we do. On the fourth day, the cycling tour arrived in Latvia. Last year, the Latvian route of the Baltic chain also started in Smiltene, but the stage finished in Riga on the Bikerniki motor track. 
This year the finish was set to be in Sigulda, with one of the most drastic climbs in Latvia. A one kilometer long lumpy ascent with the average gradient of 11%. In the second half of the stage, the ascent was to be taken three times by the riders and the stage distance was set at 179 kilometers. The start was marked with active attacks, though no highlights were singled out until the Sigulda town circle. The tempo was fast and powerful with the average speed of 50 km per hour in the first 30 km. That is why no one was eager to break away from the pack. A group of seven made an attack with a 15 second breakaway, but the Lithuanians firmly sucked them back. At approximately 45 km point, the riders were greeted with a light crosswind. The peloton split into two with a bunch of 27 ahead. The gap was kept at around 30 to 40 seconds. Aloyakin from peloton team led his way as a virtual leader. During the last two seasons, he made his own luck as an amateur in France. When the peloton started to reel in the escapees, Yakin with Volodymyr Gomenyuk from Kols team started a dual attack. The runaways were caught at 85 km. New attacks followed. The breakaways of two or three riders continued and a bunch of nine was keeping the lead. The peloton kept controlling that nobody lengthened the lead. At 106 km when Sigurda climb was nearing for the first time, the peloton caught up with the escapees and they had to put up a great fight. Mountain sprint finish was taken by Sergei Gretchen. After the mountain finish, a rider from Torku Sekersport Club and Yakin made a move, but dropped back soon again. At 124 km after the Morian intermediate sprint won by Andres Smirnovs of Rieto Modelfin, a breakaway finally managed to gain advantage and hold it until the end. First seven men, Sergei Gretchen, Andrei Kulik, René Mandri, Andres Vosekalns, Indulis Beckmanis, Ivan Savitsky and Zidruna Savitskas broke away. A gap quickly grew to 1 minute 30 seconds with two Ukrainians, two Latvians, an Estonian, a Russian and a Lithuanian rider ahead. Ten more riders from the peloton joined them and Sigulda climb was taken in a group of 17. Gretchen was the first again and 37 kilometers were left until the finish line. After the second mountain sprint, there was another attack by five riders. The last intermediate sprint at 18 km before the finish line was won by René Mandri, who stole a march on Pava Pajanen. The Finn got two bonus seconds, becoming the virtual leader. A pack of five was still ahead, but feeling the others breathing down their necks. The stage victory was decided on Sigulda climb, with the finish line down at 700 to 800 meters from the top of the climb. Patrick Tiber from the Slovakian national team attacked and tilted over the line five seconds earlier than Ivan Savitsky from the Russian national team. Third in this finish, Pavo Bajanen from TWD Lankan came over the line with a 10 second gap, but still received the leader's jersey. It was pulled on to the Finnish rider by the road race world champion in 2000, Roman Sveinsteins. Well, today's day was, I think it was the hardest so far. It was so nervous in the beginning, big groups getting away all the time and all the time full gas. Eh? Just didn't know uh, what would happen in the in the end. And uh, then I think uh, two laps to go, we got away with uh, 20, 25 guys, and there was no big guys in the general. So we got the gap in the in the bunch, and I guess no one knew I would be there in the group. And uh, it was an ideal situation for me. What can you do? Eh? And uh, leader jersey. Uh, is it uh, a little bit more than you expected before the race? Ah, uh, my goal uh, before the race was the, to get a stage win, mainly in the in the first stage because it was close to home. Uh, that's what motivated motivated me for the last uh, last couple of months. And uh, well, I didn't get the stage win, but the but the jersey uh, this far in the race, it's a uh, it's a good situation. Right? After four stages, the riders got a day of rest. The tour moved 200 km south to the Lithuanian town Panevežis. For the second year in a row, Lithuania was the destination of final tour stages. Last two stages were also of special importance to the hosts 
as they had so far not achieved any remarkable results in the first stages. Before the Panevejis Utena stage, set at 154 kilometers, we talked to the head coach of the Lithuanian national team, Arturas Kasputis. Как будет в этом году, неизвестно. Вечером увидим больше. У вас есть определенный лидер тоже на сегодняшний этап? Лидер такого, такого лидера у нас нет. Ребята все нормально готовы, так что кто будет лидер, это увидим в конце гонки, потому что сегодня говорит, кто лидер и на кого работать, это тяжело. И вы, вы ждете ветер на сегодня, да? Но ждать не надо, уже, уже, уже дует. It is worth mentioning that unfortunately, at the same night, the thieves broke into the Synergy Baku team bus, stealing all the equipment, including 10 bikes and spare parts in Panevergis. What a shame! At least the Baku team was able to go on, using bikes borrowed from other teams and tour staff. Before the stage, Arturas Kasputis gave a word of warning about the wind, and turned out to be right. The side wind and flat fields were waiting for cyclists after 40 kilometers. The peloton split in a frenzy of attacks, and 29 riders remained in front. Since the leading pack was represented by four riders from such strong teams like the Lithuanian national team, Ukrainian pro clubs, Col Cycling and ISD Continental, the pack behind never stood a chance. The jersey holder Pavel Bajanen did not manage to break away with the lead group either, and Swedes, Slovakians and Germans missed the moment too. First intermediate sprint finish at 56 km in Anixiai was won by the ISD rider Maxim Vasiliev. Second intermediate sprint was there too, at 115 km, and the maximum points were awarded there to Alexei Kurbatov, a member of the Russian national team. A victor in the only mountain sprint at 95 km was taken somewhat unexpectedly by a sprinter, Yuri Metlushenko, from Torku Sekerspor. Let's note that Metlushenko also had one stage victory from the last year's Baltic chain tour under his belt. The runaways hung on to their lead and the gap was continuously growing, finally reaching to almost 11 minutes. Michael Reim was especially agile in the finish and gained his first UCI category victory. The 20-year-old new pro rider represented Sarema Viking on this tour, an amateur club from Estonia. His employer in professional ranks is an Italian club, Amora Evita. A member of the Belarusian team, Sergei Papok, claimed second place, having prematurely raised his hands in a gesture of victory. Maxim Pokidov from Itera Katyusha finished as third. The whole etap, etap were um, crosswind, so in the first crosswind section we had uh, three guys in the front and it was super, but then the group uh, catch us and uh, it wasn't a very good situation, but actually I don't know where the second split came, because for me it was pretty easy and then I look back it was like 30-35 guys in the front, but in the finish I just looked at uh, Metlushenko, I followed him and like 200 meters before finish I start my sprint and then I won. It was a pretty awesome feeling. The next bunch including the former leader Pavel Bajanen was 10 minutes and 51 seconds behind. Third group was already losing by 19 minutes and 2 seconds and the last group of 10 stood even 23.8 behind. This, however, was below the time limit and they were disqualified as a result. German rider Philipp Walsleben, who had won the opening stage in Lahti, became a new leader of the race. His advantage over the best young rider Ivan Savitsky was only two seconds. The team classification was taken by the Lithuanian national team, while Kohl Cycling stayed behind with 27 seconds. After the fifth stage, the polka-dotted Mountain King shirt was already secured by Torku Sekespor rider Sergei Gretchen.
The day of the grande finale was finally here. The last stage from Utena to Vilnius was 152 kilometers long. Overall ranking proved intriguing as the last day started, with two best riders divided by only two seconds, which meant the gap could be bridged with intermediate sprint bonus seconds. A single mountain sprint of the stage was planned at 12 kilometers. The sprint was won by the tireless Vitaly Popkov, who spent the entire race attacking. This time he attacked alone and thus earned himself a second place in the mountain category general classification. First intermediate sprint was at 36 km in Molatai. The two best riders in the overall ranking, Valsleben in the yellow jersey and Savitsky in the white, fought it out for victory. However, as the car stayed ahead, the judges decided not to distribute bonus seconds. The final appeared to be rather dangerous and it could have affected the sprint results. So, the two second gap between the two leaders remained. Immediately after the intermediate sprint at 45 km, 12 escapees including Savitsky broke away with no leader in the group. Belgian team made strenuous efforts to catch up. After a series of attacks at 75 km, an Estonian amateur rider, Silver Schulz, broke away from the resting peloton. Schulz wasn't competing for a high place in the overall ranking, being about 15 minutes behind the leader. With a tailwind, he couldn't ask for more, and after a few kilometers, the gap had grown already to 3 minutes, 30 seconds. And though the main group had put up a high tempo, the Vilnius intermediate sprint seemed to be Schulz's taking. However, something unexpected happened. With less than a half kilometer left before the intermediate sprint, Schulz was directed to an adventure along the city streets. While everybody at the finish line was waiting for one man, it was the peloton who appeared instead. The verdict of the judges was simple. They told Schulz it was just bad luck, and the indignant rider had to wait at the finish line for the peloton coming from the city circle before he could join them. As a result, Schulz finished the stage on the last 85th place, 6 minutes 24 seconds behind the winner. Vilnius intermediate sprint was won instead by Marcel Meisen, who came before Martin Laas and the leader Philipp Walsleben. But again, no bonus seconds were distributed due to Schulz's incident. So everything in the overall ranking had to be decided in the last sprint. The riders raced 7 km long circles along Vilnius and as predicted, nobody could gain advantage. So the tour ended with mass sprint. Latvians raced down the hill at full speed and took a well-deserved dual victory. Andris Mirnovs from Rieto Modelfin finished first, ahead of Emil Sliepinš from Alpha Baltic. Yuri Metlushenko, Aloyakin, Tomas Vaitkus and Ivan Savitsky followed. Since bonus seconds were only distributed to the first three, Valsleben, who crossed the line as the 13th rider, was able to celebrate the victory in the UCI 2.2 category tour. Yeah, as I said in the beginning, I didn't expect to win the whole race. I knew that I could maybe win a stage, but I didn't expect to win the whole race. And um, it was, of course, good legs, but also a little bit luck. And so I'm happy that I won the general classman now. Three winners, Filip Valsleben from BKCP Power Plus, Ivan Savitsky from the Russian national team and Zidrunas Savitskas from the Lithuanian national team took to the podium erected near the parliament building in Vilnius and celebrated their triumph in the presence of thousands of spectators. The best Latvian, Indulis Bekmanis, finished fourth and the best Estonian, René Mandri, fifth. The Lithuanian national team congratulated themselves on the team prize as their lead in front of the call cycling team was 27 seconds and 55 seconds ahead of the ISD Continental. Champagne bottles were popped without restraint and the head coach of the squad, Arturas Kasputis, took a nice champagne shower. Okay, the race was really hard and nervous and uh, as you can see in the results, every day was a uh, leaders changing and the situation in the in the peloton was changing, so it was really big lottery and uh, it was really 
a lot of strong riders who can uh, be on the podium and uh, I think race was really on a high level so I'm happy that we can have a race like this in uh, our Baltic countries so I'm happy about it. Lithuanian team uh, won uh, team classification. Uh, this is our uh, main goal. Okay, we we were targeting for uh, Team GC because, uh, like you know, in Lithuania, is a really popular like basketball, and everybody is like team game. So we wanted to show that we can also can be a strong team, and uh, I think we proved that we we can be the best team. Young riders' white jersey belonged to Ivan Savitsky. Second man in the overall ranking, while the blue jersey of the most active rider was given to the German cyclist Maximilian Bayer. We already mentioned the mountain king, Sergei Gretchen. 85 riders out of 124 finished the Baltic Chain Tour of 2013. Seven days of drama and nerves were over. After the emotions have cooled down, there will be time to analyse the results and take a hard look at mistakes that could have been avoided. It's time to start preparations for the Baltic Chain Tour of 2014. We are trying to make uh, every day or every year something better, but uh, we have a lot to do in the future uh, to make a really nice race. And so we discuss already during the race and uh, we will do the better things, uh, I, I guess, in the, in the future. The first one, uh, this was video in, uh, in Estonia, which we have to uh, also to transfer to other countries and we have a lot of minds about it. Then uh, of course we are trying to next year to finish in Estonia and then in 2015 in Latvia. So and then that way we will de develop the race. And in the end uh, Latvia catch uh, at least one stage win. Yeah, I was really angry because I, I run also the Latvian team. I am the president of Cycling Federation <laughs> and uh, that uh, pushing two days the boys and uh, finally they won it. And uh, yeah, we, we, we won the double because in Latvia the marathon. So and in the end we are happy with all the negotiations that we had. So I think everybody is happy, but um, generally the race uh, ran well, but always, uh, always uh, not a hundred percent. You can do what you want, but always you will find some mistakes. And if you are trying to to go higher, then that is the way. First emotions. Uh, are you very tired? Honestly, say I'm quite confused. One side we have a uh, good weather, uh, very good audience, a lot of people. The other side, uh, our organizing team needs to work still a lot. We did last year a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of mistakes. We uh, were luckily avoid them all this year, but we get another ones more. So we have a lot of uh, space to increase with our organization, and that's that's the main thing. What I perhaps like to say right now. But the sporting level, uh, you had uh, everything. Uh, Finnish leader. Estonian stage winner, uh, Latvian stage winner, Lithuanian best team, and uh, what what else? Yeah, in that part of view, of course, we get uh, every, all the organizers countries get something, and uh, that's in that point of view, of course, was uh, wonderful, and I think that the sporting level was uh, quite well as well. So uh, in that point of view, it was perfect. And next year. Race will go on. I hope so, <laughs> if I live so long. But uh, yeah, before that, we need to be, make a big meeting and to discuss all the uh, minor details. It sometimes happens that those small details are so important, and I really need to work a lot to, to increase our level. That's sure.